Hey, Chad Castleberry here with firechildvideo.blogspot.com and welcome to the official episode one of Blending with a Noob. Uh, what we're going to take a look at in this first episode is kind of some boring stuff. Uh, we got to get the boring stuff out of the way before we can start doing a little more fun stuff and, you know, give me a little more time to learn the fun stuff so I can come around and show you guys. Um, so this one might not be the most exciting, but when I originally planned this tutorial, what I was going to do is spend the whole time talking about the mouse buttons and the keyboard shortcuts and the user interface, and I fell asleep just thinking about it. So... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at creating this opening text graphic that I made here, which is real simple, and in the process of creating that graphic, it's my hope that you guys will get a stronger grasp, and hopefully I'll get a stronger grasp of how the user interface works, and, and once you're comfortable with the interface, and once you're comfortable with the, the commands and everything, then hopefully we can move on to a little more, um, a little more fun stuff. So um, let me go ahead and just start. Oops new race now this is my default interface yours probably looks more like this oops dang it yeah first time you open blender this is what you're gonna see and if you're like me you're gonna look at it and go okay now what the f do i do so once you've washed your mouth out with soap and uh realize that this is a uh, pg program uh we'll come back and we'll take a look uh, first thing I like to do is I like to customize the viewports because I, I'm not a bit, I don't, th this one viewport is, is kind of, I don't know, it's, it's unnatural to me. And, and as I started poking around with Blender in the past couple of weeks, I realized that the ability to customize just about everything, not just with, with the materials and the meshes you're working with, but with the interface is, is phenomenal. It's fantastic. And, um, that alone makes Blender just worth using to me. Uh, so first thing, let's go ahead and customize our viewports. Uh, to do that, what we'll do is we'll put our mouse right here at the top to where it turns into this double-headed arrow, and we'll right-click, and when we right-click, we get this menu, and if we go split area, oh, split area, it gives us this bar that goes wherever our cursor is. We'll put it right in the middle, and we'll left-click, and it splits our view in half. Now, right now, both the views are identical but we'll fix that in a second we can also split it horizontally if we go to this bar we just created get our double headed arrow right click split area put the little bar where we want it you can put it on the left side or the right side left click and it splits our area now what we can do is we can go view and we can set our views so each view each uh, viewport we can have a different view like this one I can put the camera and this one I can put you know perspective and if you click in the center mouse wheel, click and hold it in, and then move your mouse. Actually, let me... Uh, yeah, you know what? Let me talk about that. Uh, there's a hidden menu inside of Blender. If you click where this double-headed arrow is here at the top, and instead of right-clicking, you left-click and pull down, you get this hidden menu right here. And you can go through... I, mean, I didn't spend much time looking through this menu, but I did find one thing that I liked. I can change the view rotation from trackball, which I really don't, I'm not too fond of, to turntable. And when you do that, you'll notice that uh, when you center, center click with your center button, you get a little bit, I don't know, to me, a little bit more control. And that's cool. You can also change uh, what view you're looking at on your viewport by using the number pad on your keyboard. Um, you know, one, two, three. I think three is side view, seven is top, and five is your perspective view, perspective or orthographic. Uh, cool. Okay, so that's enough about uh, customizing your viewports and changing your views. Just remember, you can either use the view menu here to pick your view, or you can use your number pad, which is incredibly helpful. So, creating text. First thing we need to do, oh, also, one more thing on the viewports. Once you've created them, you can still, you know, change their size and, and position to make it easier for you to see. So, interesting tip that I learned. Onward. Uh, let's create some text. But first, with the mouse button, uh, to select an object, like see here we've got this is our camera, this is a light, and this is our default cube. 
To select an object, we have to right click on it. So right clicking selects objects. Whatever object you're looking for, just right click and you're good. Uh, to delete objects, simple, just hit the delete key and it'll ask you, you know, are you sure? Um, if you hit delete and move your mouse, the menu disappears. So just enter and then hit enter. So our cube's gone. Now we can create some text. Um, best menu, you're going to, I hope this works on your keyboard, because if you don't have a space bar, you're, you're, you're hurting. So let's hit the space bar, and uh, wherever, wherever you have your, your mouse cursor, that's where it's going to create whatever you tell it to create. So in our top view here, we'll hit the space bar, and we'll go text right here. And it'll create some text. Now, in order to edit, right now we're in object mode, which means pretty much that we're grabbing the entire object. See? Oops. Uh, control Z undoes and Control Shift Z redoes. So that's kind of helpful. So uh, to edit our text, we have to go into edit mode, which is the tab key. So remember that tab goes from object to edit mode, just back and forth, object to edit. You'll be using that a lot. Uh, if we had a mesh right here, instead of uh, going to this text editor, as you can see, you would be going to, you know, you'd be able to see your, your vertex points, your edges, you'd be able to select individual vertices, things like that, which is cool. Um, but since we're in text mode right now, it just gives us our text editor. So we'll type out noob, zoom in a little bit, and to change the font, unfortunately this is kind of a pain in the butt, uh, to change the font, if you go down here, you're in your editing tab, which is F9 on your keyboard, uh, what you can do is load a font, it brings up this menu, and if you click right here, you can go to your, you know, your main hard drive, go to Windows, uh, I'm not sure the Mac equivalent, so you, you, if anybody out there knows it, post it in the comments, let's help everybody out, because that's the purpose of the thing, we're all noobs here. Uh, I'm going to pick, just, I went into my fonts folder in Windows, I'm going to pick Arial Black, hit select font, and automatically it changes my font. Now the bonus is that if I do a bunch of different texts and I have different fonts on them, then I can pull them from this pull down menu right here, which is helpful. So we've got our text. Let's go back. Let's hit tab. We're back in object modes. So now we have the whole object selected. Now let's make it a little bit bigger. And we can do that real simple. Hit S on the keyboard. S stands for scale. And just click and drag. And there we go. Now we've got it scaled up. Looks good. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you hold down shift. And then click and hold your center mouse wheel. You can track across like this. Just to help you center things up. So there's another useful tip. And what I'm going to do when we're done with this tutorial, I'm going to put uh, kind of a cheat sheet of shortcut commands. Um, I'm going to put a link, a download link, in the, the description of the video. You can download it. You can print the thing out. You can set it next to your computer. So you always have something to reference uh, to help you until you've memorized a lot of these commands. Now, what we need to do next with this text, we need to extrude it. So if you look down here in the editing tab, which is F9, if you're not on it, all you have to do is hit F9, it'll take you to it. You'll see this width, extrude, bevel, depth, bevel resolution. So what we can do is we can extrude it, and you can see here, hold down shift, center mouse click, and then just center mouse click will let you rotate around it. We've got a, a beveled edge. Now what we want to do is we want to give it a secondary we don't have a beveled edge, we have an extruded edge, there we go. What we want to do is we want to give it a little secondary. So to do that, with this selected, we'll hit Shift D, D stands for duplicate, and then we'll left click, and then that made a duplicate. We can move it up just slightly, and then bring the width down right here. As you can see, now we've got this cool secondary edge. And now if we bevel that one by bevel depth right here, and bevel resolution maybe and then right click on this outer edge reselects the outside one and give that one a little bevel too and now you see we've got some cool looking text coming up so hopefully I we learned a little bit about shortcut commands uh, how to create some simple text I know I went kinda fast but you know what I'm a noob at this too so I'm kinda trying to fly through things just uh, so I don't sound like a complete idiot which I probably already do anyway once again this is Chad Castleberry with firechildvideo.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching episode one. Any tips you guys have for us, be sure to send them our way. Episode two coming next Tuesday. Uh, some more cool stuff then. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching.